to support each other in their uh, research and other activities. Tech Forum is a social organization, works on your support from the members. Today's topic is Climate Monitoring Network. And today's speaker is Dr. Milin Muzumdar. He's a retired scientist from IITM, Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology. I already shared his detailed biodata, but his contribution is quite significant. His contribution is quite significant in uh, moisture measurements and moisture respect to the depth, uh, temperature variations. So there is a team working on this phenomena. Dr. Muzumdar will mention this in his presentation. Uh, so Dr. Muzumdar, you have 40 minutes uh, to start, rather 30 minutes, and we will have more and more interactive session. He will explain about this concept and what they are doing at IITM, the whole team. And we will have question and answer sessions through which the whole topic will be discovered. So without spending much time, I'll request Dr. Muzumdar to start his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Namaskar ji. Uh, I am really thankful to Tech Forum uh, for this opportunity. And I will try to use this opportunity to spread more awareness about this climate monitoring network. Uh, to begin with, I mean, little background I will give about uh, this uh, IITM and Center for Climate Change Research, our institute, Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, which is the autonomous institute under Ministry of Earth Sciences, Government of India. And uh, this is actually, this is a teamwork. I have mentioned the name of our team. I mean, I have been heading this climate observation group at IITM, CCCR, IITM, Center for Climate Change Research. And uh, now I have handed over it to Dr. Yogesh Tiwari. And as, as uh, Dr. Uh, sir said, uh, this is uh, uh, Vilas Sir said about this uh, Bhupendra ji, Dr. Bhupen uh, Bahadur Singh. I have handed over him this soil moisture observations. Actually, soil moisture observations, we are deeply involved. And other members are Dr. Pramit Dev Barman, uh, Mr. Ahmed Ate, Dr. Uh, Mangesh Goswami, Dr. Madhusudan Ingle, Dr. Aju and G. Srinivas, many others are there. So I will give just brief background about the institute. What is the institute, our center, and what we are doing at the center for climate monitoring. And then I will focus on particularly the soil moisture monitoring, the field scale soil moisture. And the emphasis, my emphasis will be on the training and networking. I mean, how to do training and uh, through internship. So this, this will be the main thing. And please feel free to interrupt me, ask any question any, in between. If I am exceeding the time, please uh, warn me. Uh, so, so this is the Institute uh, IITM. I'm uh, Mr. Vilas Rabrai and uh, Bakran Joshi, sir. They have uh, visited our institute and this is a this is the front view of our institute you can see all the just briefly i will tell that all the uh, uh, terrace are painted white and solar panels are there and last is the, our green building actually this is a green building you may visit I, iitm uh, particularly on 28th february national science day it is open but please, please feel free to visit anytime we can arrange this uh, this is little brief background about the institute. This institute was formed uh, on 17 November 1962 as a part of World Meteorological Organization. There was a need for research in the tropical meteorology and Institute of Tropical Meteorology was formed at Pune on 17 November 1962. On 1st August 1971, it was transformed to an autonomous organization under Indian government. So it was named as Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, IITM, which is now well known as IITM, IITM Pune, because IITM, when we say IIT Madras, it is taken, IITM Pune it is, and it is Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology. And on 12 July 2006, today, yesterday we had celebrated the uh, ministry's foundation day so ministry of it was it was uh, included under the ministry of earth sciences so ministry of earth sciences uh, was formed 
on uh, two in, during 2006 july and uh, it was then uh, since then it is part of under uh, ministry of uh, earth sciences government of india the basic vision of this institute is to improve the weather and climate particularly the improvement uh, and for that what we do is we provide the back end research and that, that too uh, the basic research on all aspects of tropical ocean atmosphere system so, so and th then this is handed over to India Meteorological Department, Shimla Office, which is known, or this India Meteorological Department, and then all these forecasts and weather and climate forecasts are uh, given to public. It was founded, uh, the, our founding director, uh, Professor uh, P. R. Pisharoti, uh, father of remote sensing, actually. This is, uh, uh, he had the great vision to form this, and this is adjacent to Shimla Office, this is a Ramdurg house. It is it was formed at uh, during uh, this 1962 part of WMO, and since then it uh, then it it took name of this uh, India Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology. The main uh, IITM project, I mean this this works in uh, mission mode. So we have uh, we'll just briefly describe this the functioning of IITM projects. So monsoon mission. This is a highly ambitious uh, project uh, monsoon mission where different scales of uh, the research on different scales of monsoon prediction. So starting from day to day, our day-to-day uh, -day synoptic scale, what we say weekly, then uh, medium range forecast, then seasonal, annual, decadal, and then climate it comes. So these are the monsoon mission. This is a very highly ambitious project, uh, research work it is going on. Uh, monsoon, then second one is the monsoon convection in the cloud dynamics actually. Uh, then the uh, then is the uh, climate change. What is that? I have referred about the Center for Climate Change Research, and that is being supported. These are the main thing, and that is being supported by uh, high performance computing facility. We have seven petabyte uh, supercomputer. I will not get into more details of these technical details, but this is the Asia's fourth uh, largest supercomputer, and now it is being upgraded. All the forecast what you see from tropical cyclone to day to day forecast everything is simulated here and then disseminated to the public through imd and uh, then we have of course i mean then we have the desk actually this is a system development of manpower development actually of uh, earth system this uh, skilled manpower in earth system sciences so this also works to uh, uh, for the academic purpose uh, and just I want to, uh, I mean, bring to your notice this book we have published, if you are interested, this is an open access book. This has been uh, written by one more than 150 dedicated scientists and it has been reviewed by uh, at international level also. 12 chapters are there, various aspects and this is the first uh, assessment of climate change over Indian region, particularly Indian region. It is basically following the IPCC norm. And uh, of course, I mean, we are we are the part of it. Uh, so you, you may like to get into this. I will quickly come to this. Uh, what is the Ministry of Earth Science initiatives on climate monitoring, actually? Of course, I mean, climate, as you say, climate monitoring system, this, this, uh, this combines the surface observations, the ground-based observations, satellite uh, observations, and then models, actually. Uh, to this, uh, uh, to collect this data uh, for weather and climate, uh, weather prediction and climate change uh, issue. Uh, of course, I mean this. Uh, uh, I will not get into this detail, but uh, the, the I will I will go to each and every every aspect of this. Uh, what are the very briefly? What are the these uh, climate monitoring uh, means actually? So first thing is the uh, starting from the surface observations. There is the automatic weather station. As you are well aware, this AWS. This is the terminology. Please feel free if I am using any jargon. Please stop me. Ask me. So this is well known. I think automatic weather station. I AWS greenhouse gas monitoring, which uh, which uh, which is also important pollution and particularly the field scale soil moisture. I will emphasize on this field scale. What do you mean by field scale? I will come to one by one. I will as I go ahead. I will come come to this thing. So first thing is so to monitor the surface parameters, temperature, pressure. This is what you know very well. Uh, there is a great network established by IMD. Uh, all over this and this has been strengthening and why what we need to do here i will i will come to this i mean that is my emphasis i mean uh, is this network sufficient or how we can support this system 
and what are the what are the benefits of these systems what are the aspect various aspect application technical various aspects i will come to this management and things so how we can be support you on this then uh, of course i mean this is also important uh, with the uh, meteorological atmospheric parameters uh, surface parameters the continuous monitoring of uh, carbon dioxide methane water vapor uh, concentration and uh, the major pollutants actually uh, uh, particularly the this is the field scale soil moisture what we are interested in what i will be uh, mentioning here uh, another one is the troposphere atmospheric entire it is not the surface is sufficient then you need in the upper atmosphere uh, mid atmosphere and lower atmosphere also so these are the weather radars they they are, they are used to detect the precipitation and movement of the storms in the atmospheric column actually not just the surface so we need this weather radars crucial and uh, they, then uh, the, these are the severe monitoring these are also important for uh, during the cyclone you may be aware of this so that is why we need the uh, weather radars for uh, uh, monitoring this cyclones this movement so track uh, landfall and then cloud burst and other uh, extreme events we need to have this thing atmospheric total atmospheric tropospheric structure atmospheric structure column structure so these are the things you you know another thing is the ocean also we need lot of ocean measurements so ocean what is happening in the ocean say for uh, sea surface temperature currents then and it's a carbon dioxide so we have the ocean buoys network so these are the ocean buoys these are the, these are deployed at the ocean they will they are the floating buoys and then there is a, there is a great network uh, constructed by various institutes actually are involved uh, ministry of earth sciences i will again nit national institute of ocean technology chennai uh, then inquis is there hyderabad so uh, then uh, our uh, uh, ncpr also is there from goa so these are the these are the institutes involved in this ocean uh, buoy network and then ocean measurements uh, vital for then again oceanic processes these are the useful for oceanic processes and climate variability another thing is the light detection and ranging so lidar and cloud monitoring so these are also very important uh, not only weather uh, radars but the thing these are also important to so measure the atmospheric properties the cloud height so so these are also air pollution all these things are important and uh, this this uh, how they are useful in enhancing our understanding of atmospheric processes uh, next thing is the satellite remote sensing of course i mean this is also very crucial uh, which captures captures the tropospheric data temperature humidity so entire column data you need i mean every 100 meter uh, uh, this monitoring you need and then this is the this this provides the not only so these are the limitations of the observations various observation you deploy but this provides the entire global coverage i mean all this uh, again these are the various methods with different satellites are available uh, geostationary satellites and other i will not get into again detail i will come to my point of uh, soil moisture i want to rush to that but uh, and uh, after using this whole data what we need to have is we need to have the climate model or modeling activity actually modeling why we need is this atmosphere you cannot uh, you you cannot uh, do any experiment or any you cannot put it in the lab actually so what we need is a sophisticated computer model based on physical laws phys and mathem rigorous mathematics is used in that so these are the uh, to simulate the future climate scenarios based on historical data and then these are why we need this weather and climate uh, for prediction and the, uh, to understand the next uh, thing, mid, mid uh, future uh, then uh, near future say 30s 40s wow the temperature is going to vary mid future 50s and 60s 70s how the temperature is going to i'm just giving you an example and then in the future end of the century so for that those projections we need this this model and we need this huge data i mean based on the whole past experience these models are run and then these are useful once we have these simulations all these simulations that will be useful in policy making actually decision making climate adaptation strategies in uh, near future mid future and far future and i wish very ambitious highly ambitious program is coming up tropical biometrology uh, program initiated by ministry of earth science and the concept note is prepared and iitm is working on that so i will just briefly give this about the center for climate change research what was the need actually you know i mean climate change the emphasis on emphasis on the climate change is being recognized and uh, 
this is a very essential for this uh, uh, socio economic and sustainability uh, aspects actually uh, so so it was decided i mean it was uh, by ministry through ministry it was dedicated to to uh, uh, undertake the research on science of climate scientific aspects of climate change actually there are many uh, various uh, aspects of climate change but what we are focusing so to focus on scientific aspects of climate change a center for climate change research was established at iitm during 2009 and since then i was a part of it uh, so since uh, and then in the in this also there are two uh, uh, major major themes actually where the research is taken place one is the modeling another one is the observation i was leading uh, this observation group uh, till uh, june uh, 2000 uh, to june 30 2000 uh, 2024 and uh, i retired on june 2024 uh, and and this modeling actually this aspect actually i was basically i was i was involved in the modeling but 2006 onwards i have been involved in the observation particularly the soil moisture so uh, the modeling aspect actually this is the earth system model development this is the asia's first asia's fourth uh, model i am really proud to say that india had first Earth system model developed by IITM, CCCR, IITM group, and this has taken part in IPCC also, the recent IPCC report. Next also, the next IPCC, it is, it is being, it is being, uh, I mean, being prepared. And then why we need this? Of course, I mean, we need the observation or uh, the different aspect actually last uh, past paleoclimate means we, I'm talking of thousands of uh, years, I mean, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 years of climate to establish to 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 using this all uh, isotope or this pro proxies how to how to how to build up this past climate that is uh, that is covered under this of course atmospheric chemistry as for i mean for the ozone concentration or say uh, various gases concentration how that is changing that is very important greenhouse gas and um, uh, metflux i will come to this again in detail and soil moisture of course all these observations are required for modeling aspect and modeling and then ultimate aim is to understand to do the research of science of climate change and its application of course application is secondary part but science of climate change is our major part uh, i will just briefly describe this is the greenhouse gas uh, observation um, this these are the these are the, of course you know these are the main thing is the uh, this water vapor carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide and ozone these are the main thing and these are the important to monitor actually their concentration as this concentration has increased from uh, right from pre-industrial revolution i mean uh, pre-industrial period uh, that is industrial revolution 1750 and now it has gone up to more than the temperature because of this uh, industrial revolution the temperature has gone one degree cent more than one degree cent now it is it is crossing 1.5 degree also so these greenhouse gases i mean these are the greenhouse gases because these are as i mean why these greenhouse gases is they trap the radiation particularly the heat i mean it is like in summer you are you are you are you are you are you are with several blankets actually so what will happen it will trap the heat and it will in, in, increase the inside the uh, heat so this is why it is very important and how that heat is increased heat is and how that is going to influence the weather and climate that is also important so the atmospheric temperature to rise the atmospheric how these are these are attributed to the green in, in uh, the the enhancement of greenhouse gases so for that our team is involved with observation of ghgs from various remote locations and that is also i will come to this thing why remote locations so i will just briefly i mean sihagar fort we have seen observations in 2009 it is very difficult to maintain these things our dedicated team is there uh, as I mentioned, and then IITM also 2016, and now uh, 100 acre uh, observation base has come in Silkheda, Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh from 2023. And these are the instrument cores of rupees, and a lot of efforts are required. This is a 72 meter tower, highest tower observation tower in the India. It is it is there in the Silkheda. Uh, and the Metflux project also. This is actually the one thing is the emission of carbon dioxide. And the second thing is the exchange. I mean, this observation, uh, uh, how it is absorbed by atmosphere. I mean, this uh, uh, various ecosystem. So that is what is important to manage this thing. How much 
uh, it may be, I mean, uh, uh, the emission is one aspect, but the, it's the exchange with the, uh, uh, this all greenhouse gases exchange between ecosystem and atmosphere. That is what it is. And to, to monitor those things, we have established this and you, you need uh, uh, the remote locations because this, we have the several climate zones, as you say, I mean, uh, you, you, can, you can see that a wide spectrum of forest habitats that include tropical rainforest, alpine vegetation, temperature deciduous, uh, deciduous uh, forest, and coastal wetlands. So all these different uh, sites we have chosen, and we have put there the uh, this natural ecosystem where there is no interference because it has to be these are to be very uh, remote locations, and it is very difficult to get permission in these remote locations also. But IITM has extensively worked on that. CCCR has extensively worked with that and in the using the I mean uh, local and national facilities, national all the uh, uh, ministries uh, all the support. Uh, we have we have we are able to establish this uh, uh, this natural ecosystem monitoring actually, um, uh, which can take up and storage large amount of carbon, including the soil carbon. Again, I will come to this thing. So this is also very important aspect. Again, these are very, very precious observations and required for understanding uh, or I mean monitor the exchange of uh, carbon dioxide between ecosystem and atmosphere. So, so these setups, uh, these uh, as I said, these uh, flux tower setups are done, are carried out various uh, ecosystems to measure the uh, CO2, CH4, moisture, heat and momentum fluxes as well as the, as I said, I mean, soil carbon also, and atmospheric radiation, soil parameters, various other aspects actually. So these are the sites actually, you can see the, we have one site in Kaziranga National Park, Tejpur uh, University is dedicatedly, I mean, uh, working with us and then uh, uh, Deepankar Sarma, he has been dedicated on this. Uh, it's very difficult to maintain this uh, Kaziranga, uh, this thing. And you can see the lot of publication, PhDs are produced, lot of publications have come from this, from this uh, whole studies. And then another one is uh, in Pichavaram, that is a mangrove forest. And another one is coming in Koringa mangrove forest. Another one is in Port Blair, that is Andaman Island and Lakshadweep Island. And IITM, of course, I mean, it has been monitoring these things. So the thing is, so the main aim is to, to estimate the uh, potential of forest and other vegetative uh, ecosystem in absorbing uh, atmospheric carbon dioxide. Um, and uh, of course, I mean, this is why you need this. I mean, it, uh, it is very crucial to understand the global warming and climate change scenarios. So unless until we have these observations, so 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 we, we cannot have this 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 uh, understanding or estimation of this global warming appropriately. And of course, as I said, Dr. Yogesh Tiwari is now leading this. I have I was leading this group and I retired in June 2024. Uh, so now I will come to this uh, soil moisture um, uh, um, aspect. So this is the soil moisture. I mean, that is, of course, I mean, that is the water that is held in uh, spaces between uh, soil particles. That is the porosity, depending on the porosity of the soil. So, uh, Main thing is see, there have been observations, soil moisture observation, uh, in situ observations. But what we are we need to have is field scale observation. Field scale means 0.5 square kilometer, or I mean satellite gives observations definitely, but that is in kilometers actually. And the, you know the heterogeneity. There are various aspects actually. Uh, so uh, the soil uh, and uh, characteristics of the depending on the characteristics of the soil. Why we need this field scale? Why all the I mean that is that is what is important. Ki this field scale observations are valuable for weather and climate research, agriculture management, runoff potential. This in, in your field, I mean, you have you have a crop field. So you need to have the runoff potential, flood control. I mean, in your racing, in the large 25 kilometer by 25 kilometer, that observation may not be useful for you. But these observations, once we have the field scale observation, may be useful for, for I mean, uh, application part. 
so so my emphasis is to generate this field scale observation through network i mean dedicated network and through internship program anyway i will come to this soil erosion slope failure reservoir management geotechnical engineering and water quality study so all these things are i i emphasize that i fully i mean uh, I'm, uh, i want to dedicate myself for this field scale observations and i need your help actually and this support how this technically how it is made to make it feasible um again it's a, it's a importance again scientific importance i will not get into this thing and uh, this uh, it, it is a crucial part of course for weather and climate pattern uh, precipitation and all these things these are very important so for this climate uh, this cosmic cosmic ray soil moisture observation this is a very world class technique there is a network actually complete so what it gives a very briefly i will tell it produces the neutron counts if it is uh, dry then it will have more neutron counts the more uh, say say for example 1000 and if it is wet then it will produce that less neutron count 500 say and then that is what is calibrated actually that is what is used i mean all these other parameters surface parameters temperature humidity pressure all these things are uh, there and coding is used and then from that the volumetric water content is deduced so actually time is less so i cannot define the whole uh, entire structure but this was we got this probe actually cosmic ray soil moisture probe at iitm under indo uk project and since then i will show you the data also since then uh, there is a network i mean now this is growing vastly and there is a program for networking all over all through india ministry of our science has taken lead in that but we have pioneered in in this and uh, this this site is operational since 2017 we are the really proud i will i, I want to say that we are the only one though there are many sites but i'll show you continuous data is there continuous efforts are made during covid also our team has worked so generously and uh, produce the data and these are the properties actually again again i will not get into detail please visit us and all all the other i mean our publications are there various publications all the other details are given here uh, this is actually this is what i want to emphasize uh, this rainfall you can see the very clearly the rainfall uh, year to year rainfall this is a daily rainfall actually year to year and this is accumulated uh, yearly annual rainfall so you can see very clearly 2019 the rainfall was two sigma higher 2019 20 also it was higher so these two years and so, i mean interestingly the the 2023 the rainfall i mean it is much less than the uh, annual average of uh, around 767 uh, centimeter or 670 mm so you can see that to 2023 it was very drastically and according to that you can see this is the soil moisture and this is the uh, effective depth i will come to this so you can see that there are the circles you can see the hourly the observations are hourly very difficult to get these hourly observations of the soil moisture particularly during the monsoon but this is a technique you can get there these things and then these informations are very useful for various applications of course i, I will not get into detail i will remain into science part but we need to have the observations very this thing and then you can have the six hourly average daily average all these things once you have the hourly you can reduce that these are the uh, i mean colors you can see very and validation point so the ground validation is very important how accurate we are so i will come to this this i will come separately on the ground validation and then you can see very clearly there are the slopes i mean these are the uh, uh, onset and withdrawal phases how these things are accurately uh, uh, estimated or observed from this 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 using these techniques that is very important i mean when it is dry period when it is wet period you can see very clearly and in the it's not that continuously it is the wet so how depending on the uh, this rainfall it's not just the one to one relationship but yes by and large the rainfall is major source another thing is evaporation how the soil characteristics various aspects are there those things also can be deduced from using these observations and that is what is more important i think for application part interestingly to as 2019 was extreme rainfall of course i mean pre monsoon pre monsoon or summer was very harsh during 2019 you see void of convective activity and no thunderstorm activity and then the uh, soil moisture was al almost less than 10 percent so this is also very important and 2020 2023 also you can see 
the very con i mean uh, soil moisture was very 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 less it is up to 2024 if you see further there was no thunderstorm activity after that i mean there was some thunderstorm activity it was not like 2019 or 2022 uh, where the pre-monsoon was uh, totally void of uh, convective activity or thunderstorm activity lightning activity but uh, you can see very clearly 2023 was very very and this soil moisture observations the rain was once the monsoon was weak and the soil moisture this gives you indication i mean and the soil moisture memory actually once you have the uh, monsoon and post monsoon uh, rainfall once you know then you can uh, you can estimate the soil moisture memory how long it is going to last and that again it has a various applications but for that you need to have field scale observations Field scale, I will come to that field scale. Also. And these are the validation also. You can see the ground truth. These are the ground truth. It is labor intense, but we have done that. I mean, using uh, our team has dedicatedly work on that. And then we have got these, these uh, observations. I will come to this part. And then, the uh, of course, uh, just uh, this depth, I will say, effective depth, I will tell. When the this uh, soil moisture, again, it is during the wet condition, the cosmic ray doesn't penetrate deep. That is what we have to understand very briefly. See, see, that's why the effective depth is less. And during the dry period, the cosmic ray penetrates deeper. So it is the, uh, the you, you can see very clearly the uh, when the soil moisture is less, the depth is depth depth is higher, or almost 30. And particularly during 2024, I mean 2024 summer, it is the, uh, the, the it has uh, penetrated beyond 30 centimeters. So this is again important. So these are the things you can see that. And this is what is the calibration. I mean, how you do the ground truth. You do the, for the ground truth, it is really a uh, labor intense thing. So this is actually a uh, center for, uh, where the probe is deployed. We make five meter, these circles, five meter, 25 meter, 75 meter, and then 60 degrees speak, uh, speaks we make. And then we get the 18 points actually, where these measurements are done at different depth six different layers we do and then a, a total 108 samples are collected uh, there is all the, I, again i will I, the, there is no time to get into this but we take this uh, uh, before drying and then the, these samples we take the and then we we uh, put it in the oven and uh, uh, heat up that uh, dry it up with using 105 degrees celsius for 36 hours then you take the volumetric uh, this uh, mass before the i mean wet soil and uh, dry soil you get this bulk density you uh, so using that you reduce this volumetric water content and this is the very ground truth now using this ground truth how to do this we have i mean uh, now this is this becomes very difficult actually to monitor this this uh, to uh, take 108 samples every week so we have what we have done is we have defined i mean uh, 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 distributed this into four quadrant and in four quadrant we take this observation so 44 in each uh, quadrant we take uh, 11 uh, sample uh, for different levels i mean uh, starting from 5 centimeter to uh, 110 centimeter and uh, then we take this this 44 samples every week almost i mean more than 4000 samples we have taken so far and you can see that i mean soil temperature variation how you see the soil temperature variation different for uh, during the different seasons actually you can very clearly see the pre monsoon uh then then uh, then uh, uh, the the monsoon and post monsoon season so so the important thing is these observations now this is the uh, this is the ground truth but uh, using that ground truth we have also installed standard soil moisture sensors and temperature these are also we need to have we don't define define that yes we we need to have the standard sensors but it is not affordable i mean it is to maintain that it is very expensive but we need to have that so black uh, these are the uh, these are the standard sensors and then what we have done is we have under i mean iitm internship program we have assembled this low cost sensor and you uh, with with the help of uh, with the help of dedicated i want to say that dedicated faculties it is very difficult to get dedicated faculties particularly from the engineering side i want to emphasize that and this is the purpose by i wanted to come to this forum and appeal that we need dedicated faculties and students actually nobody wants to come of course everything works in lab very meticulously but once it comes to uh, the field 
uh, we have hundreds of failures. I mean, our uh, Mangesh Goswami, he is, a, he is basically he's an engineer, diploma in electronics engineering and uh, ENTC, and then uh, um, B in electrical, then MS in energy, and then PhD he is doing with us. But we have seen hundreds of failure, and he has realized that working in a field is very, very difficult. We need dedicated faculties to develop this thing, and it is a continuous process. And with them only, we will be able to, I mean, maintain this, sustain this. If we have this network, we want to, if we want to construct this network, we need to have this thing. So, of course, I mean, these sensors were al alongside the tender sensor, we have uh, calibration, validation, all these things are very, very, and, and we have seen that, I mean, it's reasonably less. RMSC is 7 to 8%, I agree, agree that, but the variability, important thing is the variability during pre-monsoon, during monsoon, during post-monsoon, variability is very important. So there we need to have this thing. And then you can see very clearly that, I mean, uh, the, the uh, again, you need to have the surface and subsurface. So it's not just the surface or up to 30 centimeter measurements, whatever we get, got from the cosmos, but we need to go deeper actually. And th this also we have from this publications, we have justified that why we need to have the observations up to 110 centimeter or 100 centimeter so these are the of course i mean root zone is prime importance again i will not get into it again uh, this this uh, uh, these are the aspect uh, and this is a technical little technical uh, description uh, again uh, time is very less i will have only 5 to 10 minutes more to describe these things but these are the these are the developments we have taken very long we have gone we are not expert in this i appeal we need technical support for this and uh, hydrometeorological observations so integrated this land atmosphere uh, interaction water bodies how how to how to uh, do these things so what are the what are the uh, this this uh, esp32 uh, this uh, 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 whole uh, uh, we have used this device in uh, integrating this weather sensors temperature humidity pressure and uh, rain gauge i mean this is the rain gauge tipping bucket actually and then using this uh, with this the soil temperature actually basically first i want to emphasize that we are starting with you know i mean why this uh, soil temperature iot based system i mean embedded system why we need to uh, define this thing because uh, i mean uh, this soil temperature is a robust again uh, variable which can be measured with this this sensor and these soil temperature sensors are also robust as compared to soil moisture. I mean, conductive sensors, you may be knowing much better. Again, again, I am not the expert in that, but we have, this is the ex field experience which has given us and using these all information, if you use the AIML, you can deduce the soil mo moisture. Of course, soil moisture also you, uh, with this, along with this soil moisture uh, sensors also we can put, but how to optimize this, how to make this, I mean, uh, very, very effective uh, system. Uh, and and to get the information very judicious, I mean very effectively for sustainable in sustainable manner. So that is what is again. I mean uh, this this up to first we have done up to forty centimeter metal frame. This this one ten ten centimeter. Uh, uh, so four four sensors we have put here. If you want to increase further forty again forty, then next you can go again forty. So that is what we have kept the. Uh, this thing and uh, this ESP32 microprocessor we have utilized to uh, for IoT applications. Uh, then this, uh, of course, I mean this include this uh, this atmospheric data, rain gauge, GSM, all these 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 things. Again, uh, it is difficult to get into um, uh, these details of this, but. Uh, uh, again, how uh, this placement of the soil sensor, this is also very tricky actually, layer by layer, getting the layer by layer information, you can see this, this looks very appropriate, I mean, this soil profiles, you can see very clearly, I mean, during the pre-monsoon, during the monsoon, there is a post-monsoon, how this variation takes place, this is the soil moisture on the horizontal uh, axis, and you, it is increasing, I mean, rightward. So, but to get this thing and temperature also, you can see this all display, everything you will get it. But to I mean, uh, how to how to how to deploy this is also so so soil layer should be refilled meticulously to maintain natural uh, stratification, weather sensors and rain gauge installed on the separate uh, ma mass nearby. These are the details actually, and uh, this how many in the field application how many. Uh, sensors are need to be put. I mean, in a say you have the five acre plant, uh, uh, farm, and how many? So this is also there is a hydrological model actually. So that using that model, using all the experiments, ground truth, we have to optimize that how many sensors you need 
uh, to I mean uh, for, for the total area, depending on the soil characteristics and slope, other other aspects. So these are the also through modeling we can we can definitely get into this thing. And again the data, of course, these are the technical aspects actually. How you get the recording data, then how the interface actually micro Python interface, and here here we need a dedicated faculties to support us, the students also those who are interested in field work actually i am trying to work with our past students and few, uh, when the current students uh, to go to field my aim is now go to field and to work with them establish the training center may more and more training center and provide this uh, i mean this iot based this integrated systems uh, of course i mean this will be a continuous emerging and uh, another thing is the soil temperature using the soil temperature you can convert to soil water as i told and not only soil temperature but using the uh, all uh, uh, available parameters i mean atmospheric parameters and most important thing soil water to thick hai, soil moisture you can contain you can get, uh, but more important is the evaporation also you can estimate using AIML technique under internship program. This we have done actually. They are dedicatedly done. Many students have come and I'm really proud that they got, a, they get a good break to, uh, some of them they have gone for US, uh, for MS uh, to US universities and they are doing very well. They are doing, they got a scholarship also. So this is the my, my aim actually. Students should come, work under this and then they should breakthrough make a great breakthrough to go to this thing and how this all all okay fine as i say so what i mean these all information already uh, this assessment of management of risk i mean iibd has put this different uh, network and but does this network is sufficient we can support that this this our again intense network i mean through local network or this uh, uh, regional networks, we can we can support these things. Automatic weather station they have and uh, they have made this thing Mosum weather app. So uh, it offers weather forecast, all these things. But these these things can be well supported if we have the the good network again. Field scale network. This will do you think there's 700 IWS are sufficient for I mean field at your field. I mean if you have the field, if you are the farmer. If you are managing something uh, in the rural area, so there you need to have your own uh, personalized weather updates. So for that, definitely, I mean this, this definitely this will give you. But you will have more appropriate uh, if we if we have the uh, network, uh, regional network, local network. Then that will be very important. And uh, I mean, of course, I mean it will give the comprehensive weather information nationwide. That will also support. Mosum provide timely weather alerts. Again, we will get this. You will have this thing. At least once you have the say post monsoon season, soil moisture. This is much soil moisture is there. You can very well plan your crops. So that is what is the next thing coming up actually. So, so this Meghdoot program, I mean, this is also initiated by IMD, IITM, ICAR um, uh, for farmers. And the same thing can be supported. I mean, if we have, the, again, I feel very strongly that we need to have the field scale observations. I mean, uh, so weather forecast is one thing, but the, the water budget actually, stewardship, how we can get this water over the, how to manage that water, this much water we have got. And of course, I mean, this, how, how to do it, there are already systems in place. I mean, um, uh, communication sure. channels are there, SMS, voice calls, and other things, radio stations. Uh, again, uh, these advisories, flash floods and flash droughts, these are also very important, flash droughts, I mean, this is also very important, how to manage the crops, how to manage the irrigation during that time, so that is what is very important. Then the crop uh, management guidance, of course, again, I will not get into detail, more and more uh, farmers will be uh, really interested in this, if we have the weather information, if we have the soil moisture, soil temperature information, this will be really, uh, uh, I mean, the, uh, for post harvest practices, I mean, all these things will be really definitely it will be uh, important and localization, uh, again, this aspect I have been telling important thing is the capacity building the program actually the, uh, already this has been there from the government of india 
uh, Ministry of Earth Sciences. So they are supporting IITs also. Once we have this training center, we come up, I'm sure, I mean, we'll get an internship and it's internship should be, I mean, incentive. How we can give the, my, my zest is to get this thing more and more, this training and we have the, we, I mean, uh, this skilled manpower actually. You, you see our team is there, but we have to establish more and more training centers and then we have to develop the capacity building or, uh, through training sessions, workshop, demonstrations of, of uh, this, all, all these, these, these things we can do. And uh, once we have this, this assemble our internship students with us, dedicated faculty with us, training center <clears throat> with us, and then uh, all this data, once you have the data, like IITM, just I'm giving you, a, I'm just coming to the end, that uh, how this Cordex, this, this we have developed, I and mean, this is the, I'm really proud that CCC or IITM is having this portal actually, uh, Earth System Grid Federation and separate uh, uh, this uh, whole server we have got a very dedicated server very high end server we have got to disseminate the data so once you have the data entire these are the projections very uh, downscaled projection and IITM is leading this Cordex coordinated regional climate downscaling experiment for South Asia. So all these projections, I mean, many in collaboration with uh, I mean, National International Institute also, these data are available. So the, I want to emphasize again, these data are available already. EHGF and IITM is providing the whole data, what they have. Not only this, and we are developing the high uh, global, high resolution atmospheric version also. And th next thing is the observational uh, data sets. I mean, this, these, these things are also available from this CCCR website, actually. You can see very clearly. This, uh, uh, our GHG, our soil moisture, temperature, all the data are available. So here I will end that. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, open for discussion, sir. Please feel free to... Yeah. Ask. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Murundar, for this wonderful presentation. I think there are people having questions. Uh, yeah. Some questions are already in the chat. But I yeah. request uh, those who want to ask questions, uh, raise your hand and um, identify yourself and then answer. Don't raise the hands. Identify yourself yes, and sir. ask the question. So let's, this session is now open for question and answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, first question. Those who have put their questions in chat, please. Uh, ask the questions. Yes, sir. I have, I have, I have asked. I, I am seeing the first question. Please explain the role of IIBD and IITM for our understanding purpose. The role of yes, sir. Um, I think I mean uh, Dr. Bhupen ji, you are there. I would, I would like to involve my group also, Dr. Bhupen ji. Uh, maybe I mean you can, you can answer very well. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, so Dr. Bhupenji, I think it is I am the see IITM. I explained actually our IITM has a fundamental I mean, the aspect of research actually in uh, ocean atmosphere, and the we have the main mandate of of uh, of uh, I mean uh, uh, making the uh, 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 getting the research, investing our uh, whole capacity in the research, publishing the paper. In the international journal, I have shown that. I mean, that is the main thing, and to improve in the to improve the weather and uh, climate forecast or the whole sciences of weather and climate. And IMD has day-to-day -day operation. They are the operation. We are the R&D. So we are the back end. They are the front end. So IMD has the operation. Whatever this information, updated information is there, IMD has a bigger role actually, much, much, much critical role to disseminate to public. Whatever good or bad comes, I mean, they have to face the situation and many things are there. They have to really vast experience. IMD has a big, 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 actually, whole uh, era, I mean, all um, more than a century, uh, they have the observers. They are all observers. They are all uh, scientists. They are all forecasters. They know, I mean, whatever product we give, how to disseminate it to the public, what should be, in what way it can be. And they have, and it's, 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 it's not always the, uh, I mean, the forecast what goes uh, uh, from us, it can be disseminated as it is. They have to put a lot of skill, their observation, their understanding, their experience, and then that is to be disseminated uh -huh. to the public. So this is what is the I mean, role between IMD has operational role, the IIT yes. has a back end, uh, this thing, and we have the okay. most, most big I mean, uh, support, uh, this uh, potential of producing PhD students also. 
Now, now currently more than 90 students are there. So that is also a big strength actually. IITM is doing academic also, uh, also involved in uh, supporting various universities for their post-graduation PhD courses. And thank you, sir. Uh, second yeah, question. question. Yeah. Next question, please. Yeah. So the how how will this soil moisture and temperature system benefit farmers and improve agriculture practice? Yes, exactly. I mean that is what is of course. I mean any farmer. I will bring now next time the farmer actually. Uh, wapsa, you may be knowing. I want to use this word wapsa actually. I had this time I had gone to this uh, uh, the Pandrapur Wari and I got an opportunity to see the uh, this going uh, going of uh, uh, that. And they were this, 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 waiting for for Wapsa. So, Wapsa. So they are the actually there. The thing is, you need this soil moisture, soil temperature. I think I mean that is what is the they, of course they have they 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 have their own terminology. Wapsa. They they do that their in own way. But I feel I mean if we have these measurements, how how much that will sustain without irrigation, without this thing, I mean, where there, there are only, I mean, uh, farms which are without irrigation. So how they depend on natural, I mean, this only monsoonal rain. So how that, that cropping will be really, uh, if sowing will be really useful uh, or it will sustain. So all these things, I mean, you need there. And not only that, why that? I mean, it, it, at each and every stage, I realize that, I mean, plant growth. And that can be done. Yes, one more thing, I mean, here, uh, soil moisture, soil temperature, definitely. I mean, this this has to be with the uh, we have in the in the in the integrated system. We have put the camera also, so you see the vegetation growth also. So all this vegetation growth, these are the very important thing when it comes to this uh, uh, harvesting. Before harvesting also, how the harvest is to know that there also uh, how your harvest is going to be or where your irrigation when you need to do the i mean irrigation you don't need to waste uh, this thing so and not only surface that is why we want to go to subsurface also of course i mean it is tedious i know it's not that easy but these are the things i mean you need to have profile you can layer by layer you can just see every 10 centimeter you have the surface of all your field, your field, I'm telling, I mean your field, I mean, in the farmer's field, how many sensors are to be deployed, all these things, if you do, or put it, and then get it through IoT based, I mean, data, and how to give them incentive also, I mean, they, they are maintaining this, again, that is a another question, I mean, my, part of management, but these are the important things, uh, that is what we are trying to manage, who will do this data management, Various aspects, I mean, it's not one, I mean, technical only, but various scientific, uh, technical management part, all people, many people have to come together and do these things at uh, field scale level. Uh, third question is, uh, is, is there any equipment to monitor methane and other sensitive gases uh, released from underground to atmosphere? Have you considered, yes, sir. Uh, have you considered earlier regarding how common non-technical person have uh, weakened time support uh, you? Yes, I think I mean, uh, Ame, Ame Date, are you there? Hello, Ame? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, Ame, Ame, yes, sir. So please, please, yeah. you can, you can, you can um, so he has been involved in, in Metroflux and all these GHG observations. He has been yes. going to... Uh, uh, this uh, CO2 mo mo monitor uh, observations also to to this Sihagar. Um, uh, so maybe even I I would like to you to respond to this. Yes, sir. So actually, there are two type of instruments that can be used. Uh, one type is uh, atmospheric methane and carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas monitoring equipment. Particularly, uh, levels of this atmospheric gases are quite low in ppm level. So, if you want to monitor at, uh, let's say, um, any urban location or uh, non-urban forest type of location, we need very highly precise sensors So uh, that are available commercially in the market. These are uh, high cost sensors, but their sensitivity is also very high. Precision and accuracy is very good. Uh, the second part is particularly where we have sources of these gases, particularly industries uh, or let's say landfills or something from where you can get a lot of methane. There, if you have concentration of these gases at very high levels, then we have some other type of equipment that can be used. These are uh, 
less costly compared to the atmospheric monitoring instruments where we have very high precision and accuracy but the range is limited uh, here the industrial equipment they are not highly precise and accurate but uh, we can go up to let's say particularly for co2 up to uh, 10000 ppm or so so this type of equipment can be used for monitoring these gases and we have some of the equipment uh, if you want more details uh, like make and what is the precision accuracy we can provide it thank you sir thank you thank you ame so yeah i think i have answered three questions yeah any more questions please uh, fire any more questions from the audience so so if no question i would like to ask mangesh ji mangesh goswami who has been deeply involved in this technical development to i um, mean make his comments yeah mangesh please go ahead yeah, yeah. hello sir um, actually uh, most of the technical things are uh, already uh, described by mangesh sir but mostly one thing is that uh, to uh, get the knowledge or more this our uh, technical uh, from faculty is very important to spread this knowledge up to the farmers and uh, students so student is a, uh, a good medium to transfer this knowledge to the various fields excellent excellent yeah that's a good input yeah yes yeah. sir and madhusudan can you tell about this uh, optimization of the uh, what effort we have done uh, sure sure so uh, basically uh, just as you have heard uh, there is this cosmos pro and uh, we have to calibrate it but like uh, this cosmos probe is useful for field scale measurements now uh, field scale may have, uh, everywhere we cannot put cosmos probe so we need to optimize our soil moisture sensors so that they can represent uh, area average soil moisture uh, in that case we can use hydrus model and uh, identify the uh, equal uh, atmospheric condition sites and then uh, subtract those sites from uh, putting up multiple sensors so this way you can avoid uh, uh, redundant readings and uh, optimize the uh, sensor output from uh, for your uh, specific purposes so so excellent excellent yeah excellent. dipankar yeah. sharma quickly yeah. dipankar sharma he is from tejpur he is from i mean uh, from kaziranga uh, so he has been working on that so dipankar you have any comment quick comment uh yes sir basically we are working in uh, kaziranga national park it is a, under matflux uh, india project of iitm so we are basically uh, measuring that forest and uh, atmosphere exchange of uh, carbon dioxide at uh, methane gases uh, methane gases uh, we are very soon we are planning to install it in our site but presently we are uh, measuring that carbon dioxide exchange what is that uh, exchange between atmosphere and that uh, kaziranga national park so in our initial results we almost we have uh, done our system to 7 or 8 years from initially we can uh, say that uh, the kaziranga is, uh, ecosystem is absorbing uh, more amount of carbon in pre monsoon season as compared to uh, other seasons so we can say that it is a good sink uh, forest is a good sink of atmospheric carbon dioxide that uh, carbon dioxide released by other sources like vehicles and industries uh, that carbon dioxide can go to the forest and forest can store the carbon dioxide to significant extent yes sir thank you thank you so much yeah. in fact sir vilas uh, uh, sir i always i mean promote my all team member to make the presentation dr bhupen ji but this time they were very busy so yeah, i, yeah. I really, uh, dr mujumdar i really appreciate tech forum really appreciates your efforts yeah. and the team involved and i think you have a very strong team i'm yeah. sure Uh, you will come out with a cl clear solution for farmers, yes. and there will be rise in uh, GDP of the nation. Great. So I must thank the whole team and Dr. Milind Mujumdar for this wonderful presentation today. Definitely, this recording will reach uh, more than thousand people. Uh, we have very good hits for our <laughs> YouTube channel, and definitely more and more queries will be raised uh, from the people are expert in this field. So I must thank everybody for to their Robert. today's presentation. Robert, sir, yeah. don't minute it. Don't minute it. Sir, Robert, sir, don't mean that. I want to express gratitude, gratitude and appreciation to Mr. Muzumdar and his team because when we have visited the place, we had really a good reception and good. Uh, they have taken our uh, good note, and actually uh, remember that. Now, may have helped us that day also.